Hey there, this is Natalie, and this is going to be a more casual, less scripted kind of anime episode review, taking a look at my first impressions of a brand new show that's just started airing for the fall 2020 season. Now, this is a show I expect a lot of you were quite curious about when it was first announced. I know I was. And that's because it was written by Armand Tape sensei the author of ReZero. You know the show I'm talking about, but you've probably also noticed that I haven't said the title of it yet, and that's because I cannot remember or pronounce it ever. It's like Warlords of Siegfried and Roy? Shamalama Ding Dong? Warlords of Scabadabadee Bababadabo? Yeah, I I can't say it, I can't remember it, and it doesn't even help to try and say it in Japanese because it's just called Senyoku no that thing. So unless they say it a million times in the show so that it gets stuck in my brain, or someone comes up with a cute Dan Machi style nickname for it later on, I'm just going to be referring to it as Tape's new show with the cute girl fighter pilots until further notice. I hope that's okay with you guys. But enough of my shortcomings when it comes to human speech, let's talk about the show. Now, I'll be honest with you, and I've seen a lot of people saying similar things, I probably wouldn't actually have been drawn to this show if it wasn't for the author. I don't know much about planes, I clearly don't know much about Norse mythology, and, you know, I've got nothing against the cute girl military thing, but it's not really something I would normally watch. And because it's not my kind of genre, taking the first episode at face value, I probably would say this is something that's fine, it's cute, it's nice, it's pleasant, but it's not got anything that would particularly keep me hanging on to it to see what happens next. But because this is an anime original, and because it's written by Tape Nagatsuki, I 100% do not trust this show to stay in the same kind of zone that it seemed to end its first episode in. I honestly have this feeling that this is going to be Tape's Madoka Magica. This is going to be a show that lulls you into a full sense of security with the cute girls seeming to have some challenges ahead but nothing they can't deal with with the power of friendship and their magic and i just don't think that if you were going to make an anime original where nobody knew what was going to happen nobody had read the source material and you wanted it to literally be what it looked like from the first episode then you probably wouldn't get tape to write it This is someone who has managed to completely subvert expectations with the isekai genre, and so why would he be particularly keen to write a cute girls doing cute things kind of series? Even if that was something he was just down for, it really doesn't seem like he would do it as an anime original with A1 pictures in the way that this show has been put out. I mentioned Madoka Magica because, while that's a Magical Girl series and so not obviously comparable to this, that too was an anime original, and I think everybody who's seen it, even if you went into it long after it was first aired and already knew the kind of show that it was, noticed the big switch in tone at the end of the third episode. Well, the legend goes that even the voice actresses playing the main characters in Madoka Magica weren't told that the show was going to be of a dark nature. They were hired to play cute magical girls and were given the scripts without really knowing the kind of thing they were getting themselves into. Apparently, the seiyus actually began to cry when they saw some of the scenes that came later on. Now, I always thought it was pretty cool that someone was able to pull off that kind of shock change of tone in an anime, and of course this is something that can only really be done with an anime original. With a show like The Promised Neverland, which also had a big shift in tone at the end of the first episode, it was of course impossible to keep the kind of show it was a secret from people just starting it because it had already been a very successful manga. Something with no existing source material or fan base, though, well, it can end up being anything. 
as we saw with last season's decadence, which did actually reveal its biggest twist right at the beginning, it is possible to start a show and spend the first 20 minutes thinking you're watching one thing, and then have the kind of reveal that we had to wait three seasons for in Attack on Titan about the world just drop on you. And that's really what makes watching anime original shows so exciting. I know it, you know it, but more importantly, A1 Pictures know it, and so does Tape Nagatsuki. So with the, all of that in mind, I'm kind of expecting that this show's gonna take a dark turn sometime in the next one or two episodes. I'm not saying I want to start a Deadpool for the cute anime girls in the show, but either the one with the red plane or the pink plane would be my choice for the one that's gonna die horribly. They both kind of give off those too good for this world vibes. But in all seriousness, the show begins with us finding out that the main character, or at least she's framed as the main character in the first episode, uh, Cloudy, Claudia, she is sent from Europe to Japan to help them out with their tentacruel monster problem because she's one of the special Valkyries favoured by Odin, who is sometimes a child, sometimes an old man. Never looks like he did in American Gods though, which I think is a shame. It'd be cool to see an anime Ian McShane, but I digress. The reason why Cloudy has to go to Japan is because their leading Valkyrie was killed. I think she was killed. And so to make things a bit fairer around the world and redistribute the super moe moe waifu fighter pilot power, she's removed from her duties in Europe and sent to a base in Japan where aside from the monsters, everything is super nice. There are children playing soccer, people eating curry, everybody's either a cute anime girl, a kid, or some kind of guy who's super thirsty and therefore really nice to the waifu pilot people. And most importantly, nobody's at all bothered about the fact that Cloudy has earned herself the reputation of being the Shinigami. This is because on all of her previous missions, everybody apart from her has died. Now you might think maybe that's the dark thing that she's going to have to overcome throughout this series, or maybe she's going to end up getting everybody else killed. But actually, her anxieties about this are dealt with in the first episode, with the three other girls that fight alongside her, announcing it to the entire base, and nobody really being afraid to work with Cloudy at all. And then them facing off against a whale monster, because Tape Nagatsuki either really likes or really hates whales, I, I can't decide which. And despite it being an apparently very difficult fight of the type where in the past those accompanying Cloudy had all died, everybody's just fine and happy at the end. Now, given this is possibly going to be a one season and done kind of story, like Decadence, it wouldn't be that surprising for something like the character's first and main anxiety being dealt with in the first episode so that we can get on with the arc around them all becoming good friends and fighting off the big evil that will probably be introduced later on. In Decadence, we also saw things being introduced and resolved pretty quickly in the same manner, such as Natsumi's issues with her prosthetic arm, thinking that that might cause her to get herself or her companions killed. But given I already feel a bit suspicious about this show ending on such a positive note, I just don't trust that this is going to be the last we hear of Cloudy's Shinigami curse. But what do you guys think? Do you think I'm expecting maybe a little bit too much and really this is just going to be a lively show about girls fighting monsters in weird pink biplanes? Or do you think that Tape has a Wham! episode waiting for us just a couple of weeks down the line? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for listening. As always, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more anime content, including quite likely more commentary about this show as it goes on. If you're new to the channel, I'm also currently reading the ReZero Arc 4 web novel, chapter by chapter, audiobook style, if you want to check that out. 
The next will be chapter four, which I'm hoping to have out tomorrow. Thanks once again for listening to this and I hope to see you again next time.